What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Silent Tech once again, and today I have yet another mining video for you. So if you're interested in mining, stick around. If you want just the tech, well, then you can come back for another video. That being said, a tech and mining go together because we're all a fan of graphics cards, at least on this channel. Uh, that's how I feel about it. Today we're going to be talking about flashing the RX 5600 XT to get your hash rate up to the 43 mega hash a second that guys like Bitsby Trippin and Red Panda and so on have shown off. Um, that being said, they didn't do anything incorrect. They didn't flash a BIOS. They didn't have to do that. We have to do that on a few cards here because the BIOS we got is an outdated BIOS. These have been obviously on the stock shelves at Best Buy for over a year. And what happened was a new BIOS came out. Now, when I initially started trying to mine on the 5600 XT, we were getting something like 38 mega hash a second. We got it up to about 40 mega hash a second. We really couldn't get that 43 mega hash a second in. Thought for a second that we were gonna need to adjust some memory timings. We tried that. We couldn't find any memory timings that would work on the 5600 XT yet, while we can on the 57. 700 XT. Hopefully if I play with that a little bit more, we'll have another video showing you guys the memory straps that we figured out for the 5600 XT. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now, this example is gonna be on Hive OS. The reason we're using Hive OS is because Hive OS is really easy to flash GPUs with. If you would like a guide on how to do it on Windows, let me know in the comment section below and I will plan that for a later date. But I do a lot of my overclocking and BIOS modding in HiveOS because of how simple it's, it is. We have an install how-to video for HiveOS. I'll also link up in the corner here for you to check out if you're interested in installing it for yourself. It's free, just use my referral code if you can because that would be awesome. We get a kickback. I think it's like one penny per user at this point. But you know, still not too bad. It's something, so it helps me out. Anyways, if we take a look at what's going on here, you'll notice we have one 5600 XT running at 43 mega hash and one at 40 mega hash. You can also verify that the memory on both these cards is Micron because we have that in the readout there. And we can verify that our overclocking settings are the same with a core clock of 1100 megahertz, a memory clock of 930 megahertz, which comes out to 1860 megahertz in something like MSI Afterburner or the Radeon app and the fan at 100%. <clears throat> if you take a look over here, we have the exact same settings. We have not started power tuning yet. And what you can see here is we also are using a little bit more power over here. Um, this was using the, the reporting 92 watts even when we had uh, it on the normal BIOS, but that aside, we'll get the power all tuned in a little bit later. So if you are reporting around 40 mega hash a second and you've copied over all those overclock settings, the first thing you wanna check is make sure that your card doesn't have a dual BIOS on it. Cause if it has a dual BIOS on it, it might have a performance switch. This card in particular does, but the performance BIOS still wasn't getting the 43 mega hash a second. So we had to dig a little deeper. Digging a little bit deeper, we did see that we had this splash page for unlocked potential 5600 XT Pro Tuned BIOS. Let me take a sip of water here. All right. So a little bit after the release of these cards, they released a BIOS update to improve the performance of the cards. And as such, they have a download at their drivers page. We can link on over and I'll put the link down in the description below. We're gonna go to support and downloads and we're gonna download the performance BIOS, right default BIOS switch position. That's the switch I was talking about. We're gonna click download. Once it's download, you're gonna show it in folder and you're going to right click, seven zip and extract here. You'll notice it has an extension of O2A that may be fine when flashing in bio, the BIOS in Windows. I haven't checked, but when using Hive OS, it does need to have the ROM nomenclature. To do that, we're gonna go into File Explorer Options. And in File Explorer Options, we're gonna click over to View, and we're gonna uncheck the box for Hide Extensions for Known File Types, click Apply, and OK. You're gonna come back to your downloads, right click, rename, and set to ROM. Once that's complete, we can go back to Hive OS at this point, and we are going to update the BIOS 
for this particular card that isn't up to 43 mega hash yet. Before you do that, make sure you have a backup of your BIOS. To do this, click the three ellipses and select download the BIOS. Once you do this, I recommend checking this box to save to the farms the BIOS storage and then click download. It'll have a little download option for you to download it to your system. But as long as you check that tick box, if you go over to vBIOS ROM storage, you should also have that BIOS as a backup here. This is going to be in case you flash the BIOS, it comes back up and you get the warning for missing GPU, which we'll throw an example up for you guys here to take a look at. It'll just be a red X box and it won't be mining or doing anything. Don't freak out if that happens. Just come back in here, follow the same process again to flash back to your stock BIOS. Now what we're gonna to need to do is upload the new vBIOS, which we will click add vBIOS. We will choose a file. We're going to select the BIOS that we just renamed in our downloads, click open, name it something friendly like modded, and then click upload. We already have ours uploaded here. So now we'll go over the rest of the process. You click the cards button, and then once you click the cards button, you're going to click the checkbox. Now, while this does have an option for selecting a vBIOS from here, it doesn't work. You need to go up to the top right and click select vBIOS from up here. You're going to click reboot after flash and force flashing, ignoring security checking. And then you're going to select the BIOS that you just uploaded. It will then prompt you with a one prepared to flash BIOS and you click flash cards. If there were two, then it would say two, so on and so forth. We're going to click flash. And at this point, you'll usually hear the miner spin down and spin back up, and then you'll know it's coming back up. As a side note, take a look at this beautiful 5500 XT. Most people have been reporting 23 to 24 mega hash a second. And we got lucky with Samsung memory, A, which is very important. And B, once we got into Hive OS, we went over some cool overclocking very very light overclocking and we've already been able to tune it to 27 mega hash a second at under 60 watts this whole rig right now on the kilowatt is under 330 watts which is awesome so you're gonna have to give it a little bit of time it's gonna spin it all up spin it all down you can kind of click back over here. We can kind of see that it's gone offline now. We aren't reporting any hash rates. Uh, these are all the times I flashed the ROM. I think we're the th on the third time of recording this video. We had the mic muted last time. We finally had a good take and the mic was muted. So there you go. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and keep refreshing here. They're starting to come back online. We don't have our reported hash rates yet. Um, and we're gonna have to give it a second. Now we're using Phoenix Miner. Phoenix Miner seems to be the fastest miner so far. Um, it's reporting the highest hash rates, so that's why we're using it. Claymore is pretty close, so is ETH Miner. It's really up to you, but I would recommend Phoenix Miner, especially in Hive. All right, so they're starting to come back online. They aren't fully cranked up yet. We have to give them a little bit, and then we'll start. We can confirm that our cards are both running at 43. There they go, they're starting to ramp up. That one's already going up. There we go. Alrighty, so as you can see here, we both have them at 43 mega hash a second. What's curious is we're still reporting 76 watts on this one, 92 watts on this one. That's gonna wrap up how to flash your GPUs for more hash rate, specifically the RX 5600 XT. And yes, you can get 43 mega hash a second at under 100, at under 100 watts, uh, at least on the GPU core. Um, I can verify that pretty easy. Like I said, the total system power, including the router that's over there because we have the router there and that's plugged into the same, uh, <laughs> the same power that the, the, the whole rig is plugged into at this point. Um, the kilowatts reporting under 330 watts uh, over a 24 hour period. And I'll get you guys the kilowatt per hour in the next video once we get the 5700 XT up there and we're kind of rocking. I am probably gonna go ahead and try to pick up some more 5500 XTs primarily because I know that the ones in stock right now at Best Buy most likely have Samsung memory in them. 
So anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. We got both these cards back up, so we're good to go. And I will see you next Tuesday.